Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning as we announce the new government ministers and ministries. After this is over, I will give you a press statement, very brief, that tells you all the ministers and ministries. I'll now hand it over to the Premier. Thank you, Tommy. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all. It's good to be back. <laughs> all of which was in question at some point. I wanted to take the opportunity, myself and the Deputy Premier, this morning just to apprise you of the, uh, the ministers that I've named, although I think most of you would know those already, but more importantly, the assignment of ministerial responsibilities. So uh, as Premier, obviously I have responsibility for the Cabinet Office and all the subjects that fall under that. In addition, I will head up a newly named ministry called Human Resources and Immigration, as well, I will, as, well as assuming responsibility for community affairs. The Deputy Premier will continue with his previous ministry assignments, District Administration, Tourism and Transport. The Honorable Roy McTaggart, will head up public finance and economic development. The Honorable Tara Rivers will head up financial services and home affairs. And the Honorable Joseph Hugh will head up commerce, planning, and infrastructure. The Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly, education, youth, sports, agriculture, and lands. The Honorable Dwayne Seymour, Health, Environment, Culture, and Housing. We are quite a ways down the road in terms of naming the councillors who will assist in these ministries, but that has not been completed yet, and therefore I will withhold discussing that really until we are through with that, which I hope to be by the end of the week. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you from CNS. Um, can I just ask you, obviously the policy direction of government is going to change, and you said that sometime in July you will be able to tell us a bit more about that. But I assume that some of these decisions must have been made based on the agreement that you have with Mr. Bush regarding the coalition government. Are you willing to make that agreement um, public? We that, haven't completed- That's my first question. We haven't completed the agreement. When it's completed, it will be public. But uh, the discussion was started initially between the CDP and the progressives. Obviously, we now have on board uh, three independents and their views have to be reflected in the document as well. So the document is still being reviewed by all three uh, I don't want to say sides because they're not sides now, but um, by the independents and the, and, the, and the two parties. So we haven't actually inked it yet, but it will be public once it's done. Also, just quickly, because it's my favorite subject, the environment. Um, can you tell us why uh, uh, Mr. Seymour has been given the environment and what kind of credentials he has for that? And also, is there any truth to the rumors that you have agreed to um, review and change the national conservation law? Well, the latter bit is not a rumor at all. We've said that quite publicly, that uh, a number of the pieces of legislation which have been passed, which have been controversial, which have created issues and concerns, are going to be the subject of a review. And the national conservation law is certainly one of those. Uh, I think that um, Minister Seymour is as qualified as any of the rest of us to, to really deal with an, an area like uh, the environment. Uh, he certainly has as good credentials in that regard as I do. So I think one of the things that, have, that has to be understood is that uh, the challenge for any, um, for any premier, for any government, is to try to utilize the abilities, the aptitude, the interests of the various persons who are named as ministers as best you can. And you know that's what it's 
that's what it's come down to. So he was he has an interest in it. He was willing to do it, and he's been assigned responsibility for it. Gentlemen, um, Brent from the Compass. Um, Mr. McLaughlin, just uh, did um, as far as law enforcement issues go, did mm -hmm. custom is custom still in the Ministry of Finance? Yes. Okay. So customs is under finance. Presumably, the police have stayed in Home Affairs under Minister Rivers. Well, the police have never been really in Home Affairs. The police are the are is the exclusive province of Her Excellency. What, what Home Affairs did have responsibility for was for the police budget. I have, after discussions with Her Excellency, I have, I'm assuming or continuing to have responsibility for the police budget. Okay, that, that's what my question yeah. was. Who, who, so it's not that Customs is in one ministry, police is in one, and then, and then Immigration is in another. So you have the three law enforcement agencies all in separate ministries and the... I repeat, law enforcement is a matter for Her Excellency. It is only the police budget. I have no responsibility for or control over the police administration. It's just managing the police budget, taking it through finance committee, developing it and taking it through finance committee. That is, is, has been my responsibility the past four years and I will continue in that role. Okay, so what, what's in the Ministry of Home Affairs? Everything else. So there's, there's um, let me not guess, I have it right here. <laughs> There's, it remains uh, community rehabilitation, prisons, fire. And then um, I know it's early to talk about legislative priorities, but how soon are, is this government going to have to go back to the table to suss out some of these um, uh, uh, fat F uh, issues, particularly the legal practitioners bill and, and some of the other legislation that has to be passed. Is that something that's going to have to be done this year, this fall? Do you guys have a timeline on that? Well, it, it is my intention to have the legal practitioners bill passed by the end of this calendar year. I do not expect, unless there is some emergency, that we the House would resume before September. Ministers need to have an opportunity and, and staff as well because there is some significant um, reconfiguration required to get, you know, their their feet onto the the desk and to come to grips with their with their ministries. And obviously, the summer months is always summer months are always a difficult time to to get everybody here. <laughs> um, people have other obligations to families and vacations and so forth. So we are in June, so we're gonna we're gonna spend June, July, and August, and hopefully back in the house early September. Uh, Ralph Lewis, Kemanian Times. The Premier, this re question relates to your new ministry. Um, there have been promises to separate immigration from labor. Um, from what I'm seeing here, HR and immigration is in your ministry. No, the other way around, actually. <laughs> oh, separate. Labor from? To combine. Pardon? To combine. To combine, OK. Not to separate. Separate, OK. <laughs> they, uh, they're not the whole of immigration, either. So. If you look at our manifesto, um, with which all of the coalition partners agree, what we are proposing to do is to take employment or labor, whatever you want to call it, as we co currently understand it, and combine that with the work permit application process, which is currently under the auspices of immigration, to create a human resources department, which deals with all aspects of of human resource requirement and employment in Cayman, whether it is work permit or whether it is um, Caymanian employment. So that combining those two subjects now, human resources and immigration, under the same minister, you know, presents us with the opportunity to be able to do that, um, hopefully with as little problems and hurdles um, as possible. Correct, sir, because previously the um, uh, the work um, the work the human resource was under the education ministry, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't called human resource; it was called employment. 
comment. Yes. Thank you. Shanta Kayako, Radio Cayman News. Um, people are particularly interested in, I guess, finding out um, who would take uh, financial services and home affairs, and you guys have decided, Honorable Tara Rivers, um, how did you guys decide on this? Well, she, she's eminently qualified for it. Uh, she's been a lawyer for, for 10 years. She worked in, in the um, financial services sector, both in the UK as well as, as in Cayman. She's also worked in Canada. She has broad experience. Uh, essentially, the three ministers who had some experience in that field, um, Honorable Roy McTaggart, but as a, as a CPA and an accountant, given the incredible loss of, of Marco Archer, he was eminently suited to do that. And then the other person who could have done it uh, would have been myself. But as Premier, I really didn't want to take it, take it because when the Premier takes a subject like that, which especially where it has inter international um, components to it, if, if I take it, there really is no, there's no other appeal um, in the event that there are decisions to be taken. Mm. I much prefer to have a minister who can say, well, um, I can give a, a conditional agreement or whatever the case is, but there's always the opportunity for further appeal. And obviously, I, I will continue to take a very active role in that as I did when Minister Panton was, was the minister responsible and particularly as it um, relates to international um, meetings and, and so forth. But she is uh, eminently qualified for, for the job, so I have no qualms about that at all. Good morning, Reshma Raghunath, Cayman 27. My first question to you, Premier, you have now taken over the Human Resources Ministry, which is a new creation, and you talked on the campaign trail about creating a Human Resources Authority. Is this something that is going to happen, and how soon can we see this take shape? Well, I'm not sure we're going to call it an authority, even though that's what we, we sort of talked about on the campaign trail, but it's certainly going to be a human resources department, uh, which, as I say, is going to comprise employment as well as the, the work permit application aspects uh, coming over from immigration. I think it's too early for me to be able to say how quickly we can do all of that, but I don't expect it's that difficult an exercise once uh, those involved get their head around it and come to accept that this is the way we're going. Um, I would certainly want it done before the end of the calendar year. Okay, you also mentioned the Legal Practitioners Bill. Mm. That bill had been deferred. It, it's faced a stormy, um, you know, addition to the early agenda. Will this be the same legislation coming back in September? Are you opening back consultations on this piece of legislation? Well, we obviously just can't go back to the House with the same piece of legislation which caused the storm you spoke about. And of course, we now have a, um, a much broader coalition government involving mm -hmm. three independents and three um, members of the CDP, as well as the, the concerns which have been espoused by a number of people, um, including current members um, or members who, current members of the House who were part of the previous House as well. So we have to take all of those things into consideration and start the consultation exercise again very shortly. Uh, it, is, it is critical we get this done uh, for an, a number of reasons, but in terms of the timing, we've spoken over and over again about the need to have it done and dusted before we face the CFATF assessment. Um, which is coming up by the end of the year. Okay, and um, one more question. Juliana O'Connor Connolly, she's been given a myriad of portfolios, uh, including a big one, education. Mm. You know, what's the thinking behind adding so many portfolios to her? And will she be, you know, having the addition of more than one counselor to assist her in managing these portfolios? The truth is we need eight ministers to, to effectively administer the affairs of, of Cayman. So, you wind up with, I mean, quite frankly, I have wound up with far more ministerial responsibilities than I had hoped for because the role of Premier involves a whole lot of other things which um, simply have to be done. But you, you have seven ministers, you've got to divide it as best you can. So that's what it's come down to, really. I've, I've tried, we've worked, I've worked with the ministers, I've tried to 
put together ministries which they have some experience in the various subjects uh, to, as far as that is possible, but also where they have an interest or passion for particular subjects and, um, and actually want to do them. In the case of the Honorable um, Julianne O'Connor Connolly, she has a very keen interest in, in agriculture. She's, she's held the portfolio of lands twice previously. So she was quite comfortable with, with those two subjects. And uh, obviously education, youth and sports come together. Uh, we have identified two counselors to support her there. As I said, I'm not gonna name the counselors yet because we haven't finished that exercise, but she's very happy that she can, um, she can execute. Sorry, can I just follow up on that? The, um, I don't see the logic, actually, of taking the Ministry of Education from Miss Rivers, because she, she has financial services now and community affairs, whereas, uh, as the Russians pointed out, um, uh, Julia Connor Connolly has quite a large portfolio. So can, I'm sure you're talking about interest and passion, and I'm sure Miss Rivers did not want to give up education. So what made you decide to take it from her? No, she, she's a team player. She understood. As I said, we have to find... Um, someone with the, very, with the requisite experience to do the, to, to do the job properly with respect to these subjects. Financial services is absolutely key uh, to the continued success of Cayman. It's, it's the most important pillar of our economy. And I have to put in place there someone who has the requisite experience to be able to do that job properly. And therefore, she was prepared to take up financial services. The Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly is a, t is a former teacher. She has keen interest in education and training. So it's those kinds of decisions I've had to take. You have to play the hand you're dealt. Uh, and when the electorate has spoken, you have to listen whether you want to or not. Um, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with this uh, immigration HR thing, sorry. The, the, um, <coughs> You meant there's a there's a role that immigration has as as a law enforcement capacity. Hmm. Is that going to be as well under your ministry, or is right. that going to be left in home affairs? So everything with immigration yeah. is, is under you. Okay. Yes, it, it 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 was just too difficult at this stage to chop up um, immigration at this point. Uh, what we do with immigration once we've carved off the the work permit application process is something we'll look at again um, because it. It, it really belongs best, I think, the, the law enforcement um, and border control aspect of it on the home affairs. But you understand that it's, this is not just an exercise on paper. This affects people's jobs and the operation, the operational issues and operations of government. So it's not as convenient and easy as you might think on looking at it on paper to just say, okay, we're gonna carve off that bit of immigration and stick it on the uh, human resources. So it's, it's much easier to bring the whole department over while we spend the time necessary to, to make these changes and then, yeah. then move on. Brent, if I could add to that, um, when you get the org chart sent out to you, you're gonna see that immigration, labor and pension, National Workforce Development Agency has all been placed under the same minister, under the premier, which goes along with what he said. You put it all together, and then because of the national interest of what's needed, then do the best you can to separate it out. That was it, sort of where I was going with the question. I mean, it, I don't think it's any secret. I mean, the Immigration Department hasn't had permanent leadership in two and a half years. Um, it's a big mess. There are all sorts of news of arrests in this uh, uh, investigation that's going on. I mean, if you could just kind of give us an overview. Or is that where your focus is going to be early on in your ministry? I mean, do you think there needs to be significant reform of immigration? What should that be? Have you thought about those? Yes, I mean, you, you're... I'm going to stop short of, of, of saying it is a right mess, as you did, but there are significant problems um, there on a, you know, a whole range of issues from leadership, personnel issues, um, obviously the issues with permanent residents, issues with the, the speed and efficiency with which workman applications are dealt with. I mean, we've got a whole range of, of issues within immigration so you know part of my thinking really wasn't wasn't just about um, the carving out the bit about work with applications which is one thing but we've got to sort immigration generally uh, 
as you know, I, I'm not in charge of, um, sometimes I wish I was, of, of the, the, the dealing with the personnel function and the administration because, it, you know, the system does take far too long um, sometimes to resolve these sorts of, of issues. That ministry has been without a, a head for most of the time I was the minister, and I'm not sure we're much closer as, uh, what I, based, based on what I've been told to resolving that issue now than, than we were a year ago. Um, Premier, uh, Deputy Premier, you can answer this, but I just kind of want to kind of get into your head a little. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but how difficult was this process in deciding these roles? Um, was it difficult at all? Um, could you maybe walk us through how this process um, came to what it is today? <laughs> Well, actually, it was a lot easier than I expected it was going to be. Um, perhaps that's a function of my having done it before. But it, it's, it's not just the case, as some may believe, of the Premier saying, you and you and you and you, you're doing this, that, and the other. Uh, that's not the way to get the best, um, the best work out of a for the minister. So it involved dialogue with each minister separately, sometimes as many as three or four conversations, a certain amount of charm and persuasion and encouragement. <laughs> uh, but I, I think the result has been that every minister is happy with their assignment except me <laughs> because I got what was left. <laughs> but uh, but that's, one of the, uh, that's one of the burdens of leadership really. Um, and the truth is that my unhappiness it doesn't relate to the subjects I have. My unhappiness relates to the sheer volume of responsibility I have. Um, I, I essentially have to carry three ministries along with the job of being premier because the cabinet office has a whole set of subjects as well from, as you know, China from Radio Cayman right now falls under the cabinet office. So uh, it, is a big, it is a big chunk of work to do. But um, again, you got to play the hand you dealt, and the, the Constitution says we have seven ministries, and I've done my best to divide them as equitably as I possibly could. And where, where there had to be some inequity, I've simply assumed that, assumed that responsibility. And if I could add to that, Janda, there was a great spirit of cooperation. Obviously, it was a coalition coming together. Um, we started off with looking at the skill sets that each individual brought to the table. I think that the, the country will see that um, the professionalism of each individual had a lot to do with where they were placed. You know, you use the example of the Honorable Tara Rivers and her background, and you look at the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly, you see one with a teaching degree, one who had been an attorney in financial services, and I think if you look through how the Premier gave out um, the different subjects, you can see the similarity in his thought process of making sure the people that he chose were well equipped to take on that challenge. Um, and again, as he said, it's, it's sitting in the same room, everybody with a common goal of doing the right thing for the country. And from the start till the end of the conversation, the assignment, I can assure you that each person was there to make sure the best was given to the country itself. Just one last question for me. You mentioned um, that the counselors um, have not been assigned yet. Um, did you guys mention the timeline as to when we could get that, um, including the chief officers? Well, the chief officers have been assigned. I can, I can tell you the chief officers. And I hope to have the counselors completed uh, by the end of the week. Uh, maybe by the end of the day, but I'll give myself a little time to say the end of the week. I have most of them in place, but I have two more conversations to have this today about that. Uh, but the chief officers have been assigned and um, Wesley Howell is going to head up the Human Resources and, and Immigration Ministry and Doreen Whitaker who is the current chief officer in Community Affairs will remain in that role. Strand Borden who is the current chief officer in District Administration, Tourism and Transport will remain Obviously, Ken Jefferson will continue as the chief officer for 
and financial sector in the public finance and economic development ministry. Dax Basteo will head up financial services and home affairs this time around, because you might have noticed commerce has been moved from under financial services. And uh, the Ministry of Commerce Planning and Infrastructure will be headed up by Alan Jones, who's who has been the minister in the in the former Plahi Ministry, the Chief Officer, sorry, in the former Plahi Ministry. And Kristen Saku will continue as the Chief Officer in Education. Now he has youth, sports, agriculture, and lands as well. And the Health, Environment, Culture, and Housing Ministry will continue to be headed up by Jennifer Ehorn. Um, she now has Environment and Housing added to that ministry. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kirkconnell, you retain tourism. Um, can you give us an idea of, you know, moving forward, how you know, your plans are going to be? Um, sorry, what are your plans going to be? And also, cruise billeting. That has been something that has been on the cards and the government has been pushing. Can you also give us an update on that? Or now that it's a coalition government, will those plans change? Yeah. Um, I'll take the last one first. The cruise berthing facility has been actively moving forward. The berthing facility itself was put on hold because we were looking for last year to see if we could do something that would be um, more environmentally friendly, and we took the decision and the bold step to see if we could um, have the least amount of envir environmental damage with the most amount of economic opportunity for the country itself, which I believe that, that we have been successful in doing that. Um, where cruise berthing is now is before you can move forward, you have to know if it can be paid for. So the financial modeling that's being done by KPMG is exactly that to know a cost and how it would be paid for. Some of the um, boxes that have to be ticked from a government standpoint is that there's no government guarantee. Um, it will revert back to the people of the Cayman Islands. Um, it'll be run by the Port Authority. It'll be no upland development. So we continue along that process. And we had it in our manifesto, so we will move forward. Um, we still have some discussions with coalition, but at this point they're supportive of where it is. There's obvious a lot of information that has to be um, brought to where we are. I have not been involved in the ministry, as you can imagine, because of the campaign. And I owe it to my colleagues, Premier and myself, to make sure that there's an update given to all of the elected officials now of where we are with it. So that was um, the last one. What was the first one again? Um, we, we are very excited about tourism. Obviously, we set records the first four months. We had the most um, arrivals, stayover, that the country has ever had for, for four months. We believe that with the new hotels opening, Margaritaville and Kempton and Southwest landing this weekend, adding a new carrier, that we will have the best year ever and um, stayover. And, and we hope to top the 400,000 mark which has obviously never been done before and has been a benchmark we looked for. Um, our last three years has seen a hundred million dollar spent, more spend um, without a multiplier effect. So as we continue to drive arrivals, we drive revenue. And, and we believe as a government that we must drive revenue because from revenue comes all of the benefits that we get through health, education, um, and the social programs. And, and we are determined to make sure that the people of this country feel those benefits. So it's, the, um, it's a, a very exciting time with more hotels coming online, more investment coming online, and we're in a, in a very, very good space right now for Cayman and tourism. The cruise arrivals are a little bit down. We expected that. Um, there's some issues. Obviously, we believe a lot of that has to do with a cruise berthing um, facility. But we will continue to, to look at it and make adjustments of, of how we can to stabilize it at around the 1.7 million is what we've had the last two years. And we hope to keep it somewhere around there. But it's going to be a little bit of an effort. 
Sorry, I just got a, a clarification question and then a little bit more about the port. Sorry. <coughs> um, clarification. Who's got the Department of Environmental Health? I didn't quite get which ministry that yeah. fits in. So it effectively the landfill. That, that falls on the health, uh, as, okay, it, as so it always did. Yeah. So uh, Mr. Seymour's got that as well. Yes. He seems to have a big ministry too. Um, the port, in terms of the agreement that you've signed so far with just uh, Mr. Bush that hasn't yet been expanded, um, has he made any demands about changing it? Because obviously he has a very different position on, on the cruise berthing on the campaign trail. I mean, he criticized your um, plans for it and said it was all wrong. Um, so now, is he like not criticizing that and does he now think it's all right? Or is there going to be some argument about where that moves forward? And also, some of the independents, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Mr. Seymour was uh, completely opposed to having a port. So how are you going to reconcile things like that? And in the same vein, what particularly will you have to drop from your manifesto and what will you have to adopt that you didn't have that stand out in your mind? Well, I'm not sure what we'll have to drop from our manifesto or add um, to, to the agreement because we don't know where we are with the discussion with the coalition group. Like I said before, our um, duty now is to have a presentation and bring everybody up to where we are with it. At that point, I think the, once there's an agreement there, then obviously you would present it to the country itself and, and update them as well. Well, I, I don't know of anything in specific that we're going to have to drop. Uh, the, the manifestos of the CDP and, and the, the progressives, although different in style, um, and you know, there may be some some uh, Tweaking. issues like how how the CDP would have were they in government, how they would have proceed, proceeded with the development of a of a cruise facility. But there's really no dis difference in substance with the fact that we all agree that we need a cruise facility. That is the progressives and the CDP. They, we, we're still working through this new document, this heads of agreement, we're calling it, uh, between the parties. As I say, we would have probably have signed off on it, except that we have independents now on board. And we're giving them an opportunity because most of them I don't think any of them actually have full manifestos. And so they obviously need to take time with their committees and so forth to go through and see what aspects of our manifesto and, uh, well, actually the, the draft heads of agreement that they agree with and what specific items they wish included um, as part of the government's agenda over the next four years. But based on conversations we've had, I don't see any impasse really I don't see any real fundamental um, differences in view on, on any of the really key issues. And you know, we, we understand and accept that a certain level of compromise will be necessary if this is to work. Um, and we're prepared to make those adjustments. But I don't, I don't see us having, at least at this stage, any, any serious differences of view about how we take the country forward. Are there any more questions? Thank you. I'll give you this press release and I'll send it out to you all also electronically. Thank you. Thank you all.